Good evening. Welcome to AP or not to AP. My name is Dawn Medley and I serve as the Associate Vice President of Enrollment Management here at Wayne State University. And we're really glad that you joined us this evening. So very quickly, I'd like to just go ahead and make sure that you all know that we're going to be here all night to answer your questions. If you have questions about AP, different types of financial aid, all sorts of things. But before we get into the event, just let me tell you a little bit about Wayne State University. So Wayne State University is a premier research institution located in the heart of Detroit. We've been here 152 years. That should help you feel some comfort when you hear from our experts regarding AP courses. We know that many of you right now are making your high school course selections, trying to figure out what courses to take, what's going to be the biggest benefit for when you look to college. And we spend a lot of time working with students just like yourself to help them make good educational decisions about their future. Tonight, you're going to have the pleasure to talk to many of the, the folks that I work with on a daily basis who spend their time working with students, helping them make good academic choices and be successful at Wayne State. So we'd love to help you make good decisions about AP courses, learn more about programs, find out more about Wayne State if you have questions. But most of all, we just want to make sure you feel comfortable about your education and the future. So with that said, let me turn it over to one of my coworkers, Nick Doyle, who's one of our college admission counselors here at Wayne State. Nick? Thank you, Dawn. Thanks for that wonderful uh, welcome. Uh, good evening, uh, guests, alums, prospective students, and parents. We are delighted to have you here tonight at the AP or not to AP program. It's the first uh, annual program. We're delighted. We're honored by your presence tonight and on behalf of the entire Wayne State University community. Welcome again. Um, you submitted uh, several questions to us, which we really appreciate and we thank you for that at the time of your registration. And we're gonna try to answer all of those questions tonight. Um, I'd like to introduce the rest of the staff. Um, I'll begin though, start uh, with kicking off my, my introduction. I, I'm an admissions counselor at Wayne State. I've been at Wayne State for 19 years and 25 years in higher education uh, total. So I'm one of the senior admissions counselors at Wayne State University. Um, next, I'm gonna turn it over to uh, the uh, prestigious panel we have here tonight. Uh, the first person will be Laura. So I'll turn it over to her. Hi guys, my name is Laura Hetzler. I am a pre-med and health science center academic advisor at Wayne State University. I've been at Wayne now for 15 years and the first half of my career, I really worked with general advising and now I really specialize in the health sciences. Um, I also took a lot of AP classes in high school and I'm the parent of a couple of high school students who are currently considering or have taken AP courses during their high school education. So I can give a little perspective on that as well. Next we have Rachel. Hi, everybody. My name is Rachel Pulowski. I'm an academic advisor with the Irvin D. Reed Honors College at Wayne State University. I've been an advisor here for almost 10 years, uh, since 2012, and we have a lot of high achieving students that do bring in a lot of AP credits, and, and hopefully there are uh, some of you uh, in the audience today. Up next, we have Louie. Hi, everybody. My name is uh, Louis Kraus. I'm the Associate Director of Outreach and Retention here at Wayne State. Been in Wayne State for almost four years now, been in financial aid for almost 16. So welcome here and looking forward to what questions you have and hope you enjoy the program. Next, we have uh, a student, a current Wayne State student, Alex Jakubiak, and I'll let him introduce himself. Hi everyone, um, I'm Alex Jakubiak. I am a current freshman psychology major in the RS College. Uh, one high school, I took nine AP courses, which allowed me to be in my college career at Wayne State University with 35 credits. I hope this program helps. Thank you, Alex. Um, and, and again, thank you panelists for taking the time out tonight. And again, it's not lost on us that you can be the guests that are here tonight can be in any number of places, but you chose to be here tonight. So we really thank you for that. We're honored by your presence. 
Um, as you all know, in Michigan, um, there's a lot you can do. Um, we get four seasons all in one week and sometimes, right? Um, so we're, we uh, are pleased to have you here tonight. And, and again, we're gonna try to get to all of your questions that were submitted prior to and at the time of registration. Um, the first thing I like to do is uh, ask myself the very first question, which is one that you guys submitted, which was a fantastic question. Um, the question that is most common that we receive a lot, will AP courses increase or decrease my chances of getting admitted? Uh, first, I, I wanna answer this from my perch as an admissions counselor. Um, the, the exact answer to that question is yes. Um, AP can only help. Why can it uh, only help? It can help because AP shows rigor, academic rigor. Sometimes students fall in the threshold of being borderline admissible at Wayne State. But when we see a student that's challenged themselves with AP, classes like that, honors, uh, certainly that helps a student. Um, that can tilt the scale in many cases. And so um, to answer that, absolutely yes. And you're gonna find out why, um, um, some addi additional reasons why that is the case. But um, when the student is borderline admissible, um, when we look at a student, we do a holistic review in the undergraduate admissions office, like most offices around the nation at other colleges and institutions. But for Wayne State, since we do a holistic review, certainly AP courses are gonna help our students. Um, this first question, um, I like to throw out to uh, Laura. Well, let's bring her up. Thank you, Laura. The first question that we have um, that we that submitted to us is, should I take as many AP courses as possible, even if I know I don't like the subject? or may not do well in them? So I actually, I do not endorse taking every single AP course that your high school offers from freshman year, sophomore year, whenever they allow you to start taking AP to the end, right? Um, I believe in balance. I believe in having a positive educational experience. And that means that it may not make sense for you to take all of the AP courses. Um, I do think it's important to challenge yourself though. So is it that this class is just, you gotta work a little bit harder to still get that grade? I think that's a great way to challenge yourself. Um, if you if you have learned though, or you've heard from your high school counselor that maybe that's not a, a great fit for you or fit for your educational goals, um, I think it's perfectly fine to kind of leave some AP classes on the table. Okay, I'm not done just yet, Laura. I got okay. another question for you. Um, and this is a good one. It says, can I skip taking general education classes in college if I take AP courses? And is there a maximum number of credits I can get for taking AP courses? So that's a great question. Um, and I'm gonna tell you, honestly, it really depends on the school you decide to attend as an um, undergrad institution. Wayne State has a very generous AP policy in terms of um, giving credit for for threes, fours, and fives, which is not true at all institutions. And so I think that it's really nice to be able to maximize that at Wayne. Um, you're gonna find different policies at different schools. You're going to find that um, the way that Wayne State applies your AP credit would be different than another four-year or two-year institution. Um, and the same is true of how many credits you can count by exam towards degree. Many schools will have a maximum number of, AP, of credits by exam that you can apply towards your educational degree. Um, and that again is gonna vary by the school that you graduate from. Thank you, Laura, that, that's very insightful. Uh, the next question is for Rachel. Um, and the question reads, I would like to bring, uh, the, the question reads, can I come into college as a sophomore or junior if I have enough credits? And the answer is yes. Um, but a credit can determine your status as a junior or a sophomore, um, but that can sometimes be misleading because students will think, well, hey, I'm a sophomore or hey, I'm a junior, so that means I only have two years left of my degree. Um, but being considered a sophomore or a junior or a freshman, um, for that matter, is really just about how many credits you have. Um, and I know Louie will talk a little bit later about how the level of your credits, um, freshman, sophomore, junior, can actually impact aid. Um, so I'll make sure I save that for him. Okay, very insightful as well. Uh, there's a second question for you, Rachel. Um, the, what is the di what is the difference, or or can you share with us to uh, see what credits? Uh, how can we get the uh, knowledge of the, our credit, our scores for AP? 
for taking specific courses? Like a student wants to know how they go about looking to find out what school oh, they need. Sure, yeah, there um, is a really great uh, website that is gonna be posted in the chat and that is through our transfer credit department and it will have a great listing for AP and IB credit and what courses that would equate to for um, at Wayne State. And that is, I, I really do wanna make sure that students understand that that is just for Wayne State. And so if you are considering any other schools, you are definitely gonna to wanna to make sure that you check what their equivalencies are and what their scores are. And as Laura mentioned, Wayne State does have a very generous AP policy and that is something to take into consideration that if you do get a three, or for what it equates to at different universities. Um, and that that is a very big benefit to students when they are considering time to degree. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next question is for Louis because this is a finance one. Um, will taking AP courses really save me money? That's a common question that we get out on the road. That's an excellent question. And it really goes down to two parts because yes, it's gonna save you money in the long run and in the short term in a sense of by taking or coming in with additional college credits, that means you're not gonna have to pay to take those classes at the college rate. So college, as we know, is expensive and it's an investment. So though coming in with X amount of credits ahead of time, it's gonna save you that money when you're either a freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, or whatever you may need to take those courses. In addition, it's also gonna then help you to progress towards those grade levels sooner, i.e. up from a freshman to a sophomore, sophomore to a junior, junior to a senior. Thus, if you are uh, interested in receiving federal aid through the FAFSA, progressing up that way, it would also increase your loan eligibility as you progress towards college. So it's going to be able to uh, helpfully offset some of those uh, increased upper tuition division uh, level course or prices with the uh, federal aid that you can receive. That's very helpful information. Uh, there was a second question that was related to that, and it was regarding whether or not there are specific scholarships assigned to AP courses. Can you address that? That is also a good question. And that answer isn't, um, I guess I, I was, I'll frame it this way in terms of, no, there's not specific scholarships dedicated to students who take AP courses in high school. Uh, however, uh, Taking AP courses in high school has been, um, provides you that academic rigor that makes you more attractable to the admissions side of things, which then could make you eligible for those merit-based uh, scholarships that you could be eligible for as a uh, entering freshman. In addition, the academic side of it, uh, here at Wayne State, every year students fill out an, um, an, an online application for scholarships through our academic work software. Having those credits or that academic history in your background that will make you more, um, el I should say more eligible, more appealing, let's just say, to your departmental scholarships that could be available to you, again, as you're progressing here at Wayne State. Excellent. I also want, I, I looked up the, uh, the of course, we, we have the test and the cost, it's $95 for AP exams. And so when you consider taking a Wayne State class, for example, our current tuition rate is 367 per credit hour. So an AP exam is about 25% of that cost. And so that's a significant way to save money in addition um, to uh, taking a course if you come to Wayne State or, or elsewhere um, by taking AP. So I just wanted to highlight that. Yeah, um, great point. Uh, uh, thank you. Thanks, Lloyd. We appreciate that response. Sure. Um, up next, uh, if we can bring Lori, uh, Laura, up. I have a question for you regarding AP courses and uh, which classes to take depending on the major or career aspects for students. That's a common question that we get, like what classes to take. Yeah, what's the best one, right? Like what is mm -hmm. the best AP class to take? Um, so again, I said this before, this is sort of my mantra. Um, I believe in a balanced course load. So I would say it can be really nice to get some balance in your AP as well so that when you transition to college, you've got a good solid foundation in a variety of things. Um, this is of course, assuming you, you happen to go to a high school that offers a lot of different AP courses and a bunch of different topics. Um, it's really nice to come into college with some general education, like your history requirement, your English requirement, your math requirement done. Um, and it's also really great to use AP credits for some basic STEM sciences. Um, if you 
if you get to university, I'm I'm sure I'm not the only academic advisor though who's going to tell you if you're going to be in a field where you've used AP for your first couple courses in that field. We want you to continue to keep taking challenging college level courses. Um, so if you come in with some basic bio, I'm going to tell you let's go ahead and get some some microbiology going. Let's go get some other upper division so you can really maximize um, your learning experiences while you're at Wayne State. Great. Hey, listen, I got a couple questions more for you, but I also want to point out to the guests tonight that if you'd like, you can submit additional questions um, to, to us, to our expert panel in the chat. So if you have additional questions beyond what we, we cover here tonight. Um, the second question, uh, Laura, I have for you is, um, is there something you don't want to take in college and uh, and rather take in high school. Um, it, it's one of those tricky questions where students often ask, what can be done now at the high school level yeah. and get out of the way as opposed to wait until I get to college? Right, so I think that, um, cause I was kind of thinking this, this through, um, if you're that super focused students who knows that you are going to take, um, you know, you're gonna go to school for English and you know what institution it is, you might go ahead and get your math done in high school via AP, right? Then maybe it's out of your way and you don't have to do it um, later. But I think when you're when you're planning at least a year out, again, I'm gonna tell you, pick, pick the best AP courses at your high school, as opposed to thinking, how can they transfer to every single college that I might eventually choose? Um, there's a lot of back planning to do there. Um, yeah, <laughs> not a real straightforward <laughs> answer, unfortunately. No, that that's really that's that's really good information. The other uh, question uh, related, it's a secondary question to that one, is if a student does poorly in an AP class, yeah, and how is that viewed, and what should they do in that situation? So I think that we need to break down to the difference between doing poorly on the test and doing poorly in the class, right? Um, and my question to students is always, if you were challenged and you didn't perform the way you wanted to, um, how did you then reflect, assess, and respond? So I think there's a value in taking challenging courses where this is all about skill building so that when you get to college, you are super successful and you can achieve everything you want to. Um, AP courses are gonna give you the density of content that you need for college level and they're going to give you experience prepping for a big standardized test that's content based. So for our students who eventually want to do maybe a health sciences program or take the LSAT because they want to be lawyers, I think that's great practice that you can do in high school um, that building those skills will serve you well in the long time. That's excellent information. Now, the next one, I'm going to pick your brain a little bit as a parent. Yeah. Uh, of a high school uh, or if you're a parent or guardian, for example. You want, always want to know how can you best support your student, you know, whether or not they're taking, they should take AP or not. You know, I, I know the college board says that all students can take AP classes. So as a parent, what is, what is your uh, view in, in helping students navigate that process? Yeah, so I, um, I've got two boys who, one who just is, is a freshman at Wayne State and one who is, um, <laughs> one who's a junior in high school and they've both taken AP. Um, but they haven't taken the same classes because they don't have the same interests um, and they don't have the same visions for their future. So we've planned different coursework for each of them. Um, for me as a parent, my biggest resource has been both their current and former teachers, kind of asking them, you know, what's a good AP, what's a good class, because I'm more interested in the value of the course um, and really using the, the high school counselors to say, you know, this is what we're thinking what makes sense to you? What courses would you recommend for this student versus the other one? So. Hmm. Thank yeah. you, Laura. I, I know I ask you a lot of questions, sure. but since you're a parent with, with uh, school-aged children, we wanted to bring you in for that one. Yeah. Up next, we'd like to bring Alex in, our, our student perspective. And thank you, Alex, for joining us tonight. I, I know Alex is in the middle of a semester, so we want to um, be cognizant of your time, and we appreciate you coming tonight to, to speak with us as me. a panelist. Um, basically, now this question relates to, will I have more study time uh, for an AP course than I would for a regular course? Yeah, the short answer is yes, but AP classes are great because 
you will get some exposure on topics that you'll be studying in college. Um, the workload for AP classes is going to vary by class to class just on your nature of different schools, different classes, different teaching styles and stuff like that. But on average, yeah, there will be a little bit more work, but it's totally worth it, in my opinion, in the long run. So, yeah, I would recommend going for it. Okay. And another question for you, too. I, I know both when while you were in high school, this is a common question, and I see that it was submitted to us as well. The parent and student want to know if they participate, or if their student participate in extracurricular activities, um, would that affect them, you know, in terms of taking AP courses? Can they do, you know, both simultaneously? And what's the effects there? Um, I would say that, I mean, obviously, as we all know, school is a balance between work, extracurriculars, social time, and just time for yourself. Um, and AP classes will definitely shift that balance towards schoolwork, but it is totally possible to do extracurriculars while doing AP. Um, like last year, I did the school musical, I did a few clubs, um, and four APs, if I didn't mention already. Um, and I mean, and it was totally fine. I had plenty of time to do all of that and still had some time for my friends and for myself. So, so again, while that balance does shift more towards work, I would say that it's totally cool and it's to and I encourage you to do extracurriculars in addition to AP classes, but um, just be mindful of that balance. Thank you, Alex. And again, we appreciate you you coming on to answer these questions because we know that they were geared toward you, these two questions specifically. Up next, we'd like to bring Laura back. You know, I want to ask her the next question and it's regarding taking AP classes and are they all created equal? You know, that's, that's a common question. And then um, am I guaranteed to be more prepared for college just because I took AP? which is an important question. Yeah, I think that that's a really important question. I um, I do believe that taking AP courses helps you prepare for the dense material that you're going to have to learn. And it also helps you develop some intellectual rigor about how you approach your content. In most AP classes, you won't just be memorizing and spitting it back up. Most of them are going to, to require you to synthesize and really integrate a lot of information, which is what we want you to do in college. Um, the one thing I would say that this is based on my personal experience, um, one thing that's a surprise even for students who've taken a rigorous high school AP based or IB based coursework, we are still going to expect you to do that mastery and that excellent learning faster. And that's one thing AP will not prepare you for is the college level speed. So it's gonna it's gonna help you build your intellectual rigor, but you're gonna have to learn to continue to be even faster when it comes to processing your academics and staying on task. So thank you, Laura. Uh, great perspective. Um, next question I, I'd like to address to uh, Rachel. Um, it just it, the the question reads: What are some of the advantages of taking AP courses that many don't immediately consider? Sure. That's actually, as an honors advisor, I work with a lot of students that come in with a great deal of, of AP credit. Some come in with none and some come in with 30 AP credits. And so um, we're big proponents of that doesn't necessarily mean fast forwarding your degree. Um, it certainly does mean that, you know, you could graduate before four years, but a lot of our students actually look for opportunities to be more involved uh, in their degree. So some students may double major. Some students may uh, look to engage in study abroad opportunities. Um, some may, um, like we have some students that are participating in a, a junior year in Munich program and having some of that um, space within their curriculum because of AP credit really does allow them to, to explore what we call high impact practice activities in the university um, and really be engaged as a student and look so that when they do graduate, they feel like, yes, I have, done everything that I wanted to do. I'm leaving with no regrets and I feel like I have gotten the experience that I wanted. Thank you. Um, the next question um, I, I see here, uh, students are asking, it's really the most common question I think that all of us receive. It's, um, should I, what's the advantages of taking AP courses? Um, should I take regular courses and get a 4.0 or should I take uh, AP courses and get a 3.0. 
And, and I think I'll go ahead and answer that one from an admission standpoint and from my expertise. I, I would say you're always better when you show rigor to institutions. And one of the ways of showing rigor is, is by taking AP courses, dual enrollment, IB, things like that. But AP in particular, um, that helps us. Uh, it it may, means that that's a well-rounded student. Now, sometimes, and I will say, I will caution this, sometimes it can affect merit scholarships with a lower GPA. However, the flip side is the benefit of taking an AP class is a higher GPA if it's weighted. And we see students get uh, numerous scholarships here at Wayne State, and we're very generous that way. Um, so I would say, certainly, prepare yourself really well by, by taking courses that are going to benefit you and prepare you for college, particularly if you're going off to college. And so you, you, you want to make put yourself in proper position that way. And so and that then, was a question I got. Yeah, can yeah. I also share, just from an honors perspective, mm -hmm. our students are always looking to be engaged in their education deeper. They want to get more into the material. Um, they don't necessarily just want to take the easy path. And so that is the idea of the AP credit is going to give you that that depth, that understanding of the course material, that engagement with, with your instructors and your teachers. And so that is always something when students come to college and they're looking to take honors credits, we always say honors credits and AP are similar in that you're looking to engage the material a little bit more. You're looking to have that relationship with your faculty. So absolutely, it's a great experience. Thank you. Um, I, I see there is a question that was posed in the chat. I, I hope I'm reading it correctly. It's saying, um, I don't know the difference between the two. I think it's AP um, versus honors, is it? Um, either of our panelists can jump in and answer that. Um, knowing the difference between AP and honors. Uh, I, I was going to say, Laura, right. yeah. Um, I mean, Wayne State does not have a specific preference of, for AP versus IB. Um, I think that that's about what your district is offering. Um, I do think that, you know, sometimes where I, I get a little confused is wondering kind of why did a student take like three bio APs but not take any English or not take any math? Um, because then again, we're getting out of balance right now. You're coming in with sophomore level credits in, in bio, but I still got to put you in a freshman level English class. So I'm really going to encourage students to um, take a little bit of a couple different things rather than worrying about are they AP or IB, but am I, am I taking that well-rounded course load? Mm -hmm. Thank you for answering that. Um, it looks like they put AP versus IB. And so I may have misquoted there and I said honors. Um, I, I know that's a common question, the difference between AP and IB. I do, I can tell you that Wayne State will provide credit at the HL level for uh, IB, but for AP, of course, three or higher in general, if the score is at that rate, you're gonna get some college credit. And so I, I would think that that would be a good route to go in this in this situation. Um, now, in terms of which is better, um, my my fast answer to that is always wherever the student learns and the instruction is best for the student. In other words, there is no silver bullet to uh, rigor. In other words, both show rigor. We have some fantastic IB students that come into Wayne State. We have some fantastic AP students. But I always say. For a student and a parent is where learning is best, where that student performs the best, because they both are weighted the same, in, in my opinion. Um, we got some extra questions that were submitted, and I, I do want to pose that to the entire uh, panel, and whoever wants to jump in, feel free to do so. Um, it says, what AP courses look best on my high school transcript when I apply to college? Oh, wow. We're all in here. <laughs> I know. We all of a sudden popped in. Hello. <laughs> Hi, guys. Thank you for joining us, guys. <laughs> so I'll pose it again. Um, I, I did say pretty fast. What AP courses look best on my high school transcript when I apply to college? I know it's Lauren a tricky question. I made question. the same face because I don't think that there, there is a, a best one. Right. I think it really depends on what you're trying to achieve with your AP credit and, and where that fits within your curriculum. Um, you know, if you're trying to, you know, get some gen eds out of, out of the way, you know, some of those earlier English and, and communication classes, making sure that you're looking at the AP courses that you're taking and where they will place makes the mm -hmm. most sense. But 
I don't necessarily think that it's like, ooh, you have AP credit for English. Mm, you only have AP credit for Spanish. Mm -hmm. You know. <laughs> so essentially, you want to line them up with your major or your your career path, basically. You if you're going to go off into engineering, obviously, you want to do AP. You want to do calc. You want to do classes like that that are going to be beneficial to your for your major. I think just making informed decisions is probably like the underlying theme of that answer is just making sure that you know, based off of where you want to go, what your AP score could equate to, mm -hmm. and if that makes sense for you and what you, you might do. And if it's a good class at your particular high school. Okay. I, I mean, I'm going to come back to that because there's, you know, every high school has their infamous classes. Like, that's a terrible class. I know it's AP, but it's not a good class. So again, I'm going to go back to that positive educational experience. Um, mm -hmm. so I, I agree with Rachel. Okay. Well, the, the next question that, that I saw, the additional questions that we received was the one that is kind of common as well. Um, how much faster can I graduate by taking AP classes in high school? Mm. Well, well, you want to go with that one first? Sure, I'll do that one. Um, so first of all, it's going to depend on how many credits you bring in. Um, mm -hmm. But I personally, and again, I know Rachel and I kind of, we talk about this a lot with because we share a lot of the same students. Um, I'm not going to encourage you to graduate a lot faster necessarily. If you've got, if you're coming in with a bunch of AP, you've probably got a four-year scholarship with us. Take advantage of those four years. Do as much as you can. Um, really enjoy the undergraduate experience. Um, I personally hear this question the most from our pre-med specifically students um, because they want to start med school fast. Um, and I can also add on that standpoint that med schools don't want to see you at 20. That you're not you're not mature enough to handle that dense curriculum. So we're gonna really encourage you to spend really quality time rather than rushing through. Yeah, and I can echo what, what Laura said too in that there's a lot that's supposed to happen in your undergraduate experience outside of just taking classes, getting involved in student organizations, internships, co-ops, majors, minors, study abroad, all those fun things, and really making sure that you're making kind of those intentional choices. Because we, we do talk to some of our alumni, and some students will be like, oh, I really wish I had taken that study abroad when I had the opportunity because trust me, you won't ever travel as cheap as you will as an undergraduate student. But it's also the idea that there's a lot happens with you as a, as a person between right. those potential four years of, yeah. of development and, and really figuring out where you want to go, not only with your degree, but with your career and, and really kind of letting that experience wash over you, I think is really important. And Laura and I share lots of students and we talk about it all the time that just because you can, doesn't always necessarily mean you should. So basically you're saying it's more of a marathon than a sprint. Absolutely. Is what I'm hearing. <laughs> okay. You know what, Alex is here. I saw him nodding his head. I, I want to get the student perspective about that and finishing faster. What's, what's your take on that? I mean, I don't know. It's, um, I'm actually kind of a student that's a little bit ambitious with what I want to do in my four years. So, I mean, I am going to take my time because I just have a lot I want to do within these four years. So I would say if you're like me, just to kind of plan, through, plan your year hours out a little bit, but take your time because you have four years more, maybe even a little more if you want. Um, so take advantage of this undergrad time um, and just kind of just kind of figure it out as you go through I mean, because it will come to you. It obviously will come to you. So. Take your time, figure it out, and it's gonna be great, you know? Alex, can I ask you a follow up with that? Fire. Would you be, <laughs> poor Alex. Um, <laughs> will you be willing to share kind of some of the ways you're gonna use that? You you came in, you told us with 35 credits. How are you gonna spend that extra year? What, what are some of the ambitious things you've got planned? I guess that's where I'm going. I mean, because I had the AP credits that knocked out a lot of my um, gen eds. Um, so I'll probably use that time to maybe use a second minor because I'm interested in kind of going double minor um, or maybe try to figure out some things like that. I also am thinking about study abroad, hopefully. Um, so those things take a lot of time as I'm sure you could guess. Um, so using that time that I'm giving from AP classes, it will definitely help me out in figuring out when and how I'm going to do that. 
So, AB Costas can do that for you. So, yeah. Thanks for letting me put you on the spot, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for, for, yes, Alex, thanks for doing that. We do appreciate your, your commitment tonight. Again, folks, he's a student, but he's an exceptional student. And one of the ways of doing that, I'm sure he challenged himself, you, you know, in high school. And AP would be one of those ways of doing so. There are so many different advantages for students doing AP coursework and in any other that shows rigor. Um, some of the best schools like such Wayne State will definitely look at your transcript to see how well-rounded you are as a student. And you don't want to compromise that opportunity of getting in the college of your choice by taking classes and getting all A's. Uh, and that's fun to get all A's. I, I like it better than anyone, but I also like a challenge. And that challenge will definitely prepare you. Um, before we uh, wrap things up this evening, we'd like to kind of go around and if you, any of you guys like to share some last minute advice um, as it relates to AP and, and the topics we've covered tonight. We're doing that already. Well, hold Nick, no, I think and that, there and I and as as I say that I, I see that we're getting additional questions. <laughs> and so like, we wait, will address know. those. As Dawn mentioned at the beginning, we will address and, and answer all of the questions. We're not in a rush to get out. It's just that we wanted to make certain we covered all of the questions that you submitted. And I think the panel has done an expert uh, excellent job of doing so. And so Nick, I know there's a question I think that we sure. want to make sure that we uh, addressed, and that was What's the difference between AP credit counting for credit and counting as a class? Um, and I think that that's where sometimes students, um, when we talk about I'm a junior, I'm a sophomore, I only need two more years. And that's where really making sure that you understand that certain courses and certain AP tests will equate to actual courses that you may need as far as an English class or a communications class and actually kind of check off that requirement some AP scores may just transfer as college credit. So it's not necessarily satisfying a general education requirement, but it may just count as credit towards a degree. Um, and so that's where sometimes students will say, well, I don't understand. I'm transferred, I, I brought in 34 AP credits. Right. Um, why am I not graduating sooner? And it's like, you have those credits, but sometimes they don't, it's not a one for one as far as this AP test is this class specifically. Sometimes it's more of an elective credit mm -hmm. or just credit in the major. Um, and so that's really making sure that you're consulting um, the website, at least for Wayne, that we shared, which will tell you exactly if you what AP or IB test you took, what score you would get, and then what that would equate to at Wayne State. And that's also where meeting with an advisor when you're at orientation or in your first semester to really go through what that's gonna look like for you and where your credit ended up fitting um, and, and kind of what that is gonna mean for your three-year plan, your three and a half year, your four-year plan of work in, in declaring majors and minors, or in Alex's case, double minors. Mm -hmm. there is, there's another question that was posed to us, a uh, very good question actually, it's about will med schools look at how I take AP courses in high school, or should I just take the courses at Wayne State? That so, would be an example. Yeah. yeah, so that's a great question. Um, I, I'm gonna start by saying, um, this is of course thinking a little bit further down the road, but there are absolutely medical schools in this state and throughout the country that no longer have specific course requirements. Uh, one big example of that would be right here, University of Michigan. University of, or Oakland University, Western University, Michigan State, those medical schools don't have specific course requirements. So for them, they don't care. Um, other schools will accept those AP credits, no problem. But either way, here's what I'm gonna tell you. If you come to me with a four or a five on your AP bio course, let's say a, a, a five on your, your AP bio, and you got credit for two semesters of basic bio, and you say, hey, Wayne State only needs these two semesters. Am I good? I'm going to say, yes, and. Yes, and. What else are we going to take to really continue to develop those skills, to get to that higher level bio you need to be successful in the MCAT, and honestly, to be able to apply to any medical school you want to, even if that dream school for you ends up not accepting your AP credit. What other things are we going to have on that transcript? So I look at it as it's kind of giving you a head start, but we're not going to stay. We're not going to stay at that level. We're going to continue to, to grow and, and challenge you. Another question they submitted too is is regarding um, AP 
courses and are they similar to midterms and finals in terms of challenge? Alex, um, that's totally What's your you. take on that? <laughs> that's what it is. Yeah. This is. This is earmarked directly for you, Alex. It's a good question. Yeah, it is a really good question. Um, I mean, it was a year ago when I took my last exam, but I would say eh, it is a little bit harder than what I would say for my finals or midterms. Um, although, like in my school, it, my AP teachers really prepared us because all of our tests were based off of AP questions. So if your school is like my school, by the time you get to the AP test, you should be more than prepared. So don't worry too much, don't stress. They will get you ready for it because that's in some ways what the teaching's leading up to. So just trust your teacher, you're gonna be fine. So, yeah. Uh, there's another question here. It says, um, would it reflect negatively for me if I took AP courses my sophomore or junior year and stopped taking in my senior year? Um, I'll kind of answer the first part of that because it, it does, from an admission standpoint, we all, always want to see you trending upward. For example, um, you might get off to a slow start your ninth grade year, but you want to be trending upward. Unlike the Lions, Pistons, Tigers, and Red Wings, we're all going backwards, right? So we want to see you going forward, and in which they will turn it around, I'm, I'm hopeful. But that's the trend we want to see. We, we often get that question as students um, begin, they get, get off to a slow start, and then they're steadily rising. That's impressive. And if you are a senior and you're sitting in on this, I do, this is a good time to plug. Um, be careful about that disease seniors get. You know, senioritis. Um, we certainly want you to finish as strong as you started out. You you want to finish strong and be prepared to come to Wayne State. And that's a very good question. Whoever submitted that, I, I'm glad that you did, so we could address that issue too. Um, does Wayne State offer good financial aid or scholarships? I think Louis is. This is earmarked. That's for, you. for me. That's for me. I can answer that one. I can answer that one. And I would say yes, in the sense that we are competitive to what our, our peer institutions are able to provide and award students that are in, that are coming in with the high achieving academic side of it. Um, and then for those students that have a need, quote unquote, through the FAFSA, that we can come up with a great financial aid package for both merit based scholarships and need based financial aid to meet the cost of your education here at Wayne State. OK, thank you for that. Sure. Um, now, this one is going to go back to you, Rachel. Um, it, it was about um, the difference between AP credit counting for credit or counting as a class. And sometimes there's confusion about that. Right. Um, and that's that's really we're making sure that you are consulting whatever college you're looking at, what their equivalency charts are. And seeing, you know, if I get a score of this and this, does it what class does it count for? Um, does it count for major credit? Does it count kind of for elective credit? And then, and how that places within your your potential program? And that can really just, you know, most I would say I hope all colleges. I know Wayne State has a really efficient one. That equivalency table of of this is the test I plan on taking um, or course I plan on taking, and what does it look like at this institution? And then. What does it look like at this institution? What does it look like at this institution? And then, and really just being informed, I think, is, is helpful. Thank you. At this point, what I'd like to do is everyone share like a last bit of advice for the guests that, that came on today. Is it just say any last minute things or if you want to conclude, you know, your take based on your perch as an advisor, as a student, financial aid person, and I, I'll do the same as an admissions professional. Um, sure. Really I'm going like to, I, well, I'll go first because I see a question popped up for me. So I do just want to make sure that I answer it. Um, okay. And that was, um, how can I get into the honors college and what would benefit me in college? And I know that that's a question that we sometimes get. And ironically, Laura probably gets, and I don't doubt Nick gets, and Alex <laughs> is in the honors college and Louie. Um, the honors college actually pairs and works uh, in tandem with admissions. And we will set, um, an entrance GPA and historically an ACT and SAT score. Um, we know that Wayne State currently is, is doing this test optional um, for this year. And so we set some behind the scenes parameters for, for that as well. And so students will actually proactively receive an invitation from us 
after they've been admitted to the university that will invite them into the honors college. It, it may be, we may be able to offer them an additional scholarship through the honors college. Not every student though that gets invited into the honors college does get a scholarship. We do have private scholarships just like every other college and department. So that is something that being an honors student would make you eligible for. But as far as a benefit, um, we always talk about just like AP credit helps move you to the next level, whether that's college, you know, and things like that. Um, being an honor student does the same for you with that next level, whether it's graduate school or whether it's um, a career. Um, uh, it's the same idea of putting your best foot forward when you're going to apply to those programs, right? So as an honor student, let's use medical school as an example. Sorry, Laura. Um, but I'm a, a bio major applying to medical school or I'm a bio honor student applying to medical school. And so on my transcript, I don't know why I have my hands up like that matters, but um, uh, as on the transcript, I'm showing as the bio honor student that I engaged in honors curriculum um, in the courses that medical school cares about, right? So I, I went above and beyond just taking regular bio 1510 or microbiology, I engaged in the honors curriculum. The honors curriculum also does enable students to be a little bit more um, collegial with their faculty. Mm -hmm. And so when you're coming to getting into research labs or letters of recommendation, honors courses and honors projects do allow students to, to engage in that closeness with the faculty, which it can be very, very helpful. And also I think when it comes to writing personal statements, it's, it's outside of fulfilling the typical requirements, right? All pre-med students are, these are the courses I need to take and the volunteering and the job shadowing and the things. What else did you do? And the honors curriculum is a really great way to say, in addition to the baseline, I did this and it puts me here. Laura, would you think that's on par? What she said. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And we talk about this all the time because students will ask me, um, does it make sense to stay in honors if I am pre-med or should I just get the other ones because my grades will be higher? And we have those those same conversations about the ability to get to know faculty well, about um, the opportunities. I see way more of my honor students students doing research and research for credit, which is you know a huge differentiator. Um, so, and I'd love, I, I love that um, our particular honors college, this is getting a little off track, but I love that our honors college that, um, is so connected to the community and really pushes students to be engaged in the community, to learn about the city. Um, so many of our students want to do graduate programs at Wayne. And I think really getting that good grounding in the, the importance of our institution in the city and the making the meaning with the neighborhoods, um, I think just serves you so well going forward. Um, very helpful. Would anyone like to add to that? Alex, um, I, will, I will say, well, what we often see as well, you know, there's a lot of school districts, and I will say from my 25 years experience is that some school districts are less affluent than others. So the opportunity to take AP courses may not be there for those students. And I would suggest there are other alternatives as well. Um, obviously, you have dual enrollment, um, which is significant as well. That shows rigor. Um, some of them have honors courses, but they also have, of course, some have I, IB. And so I would say with that school district that have less opportunities, those students can do, consider doing something like dual enrollment. I know Wayne State offers some uh, very good opportunities for students in high school to do dual enrollment. Actually, that's the second hat of mine. Um, I'm actually our dual enrollment coordinator too. And so um, from my perch, that's another way of saving money. Um, in the long run, taking these courses and, and getting them out of the way. Um, oftentimes, we see a lot of students who come from early colleges. Um, that's a high school connected with either a community college or they come in with an associate's degree and they want to be transfer students so bad. And we tell them that you're still considered an incoming freshman and you qualify for the best scholarships as incoming freshmen. And so I, I wanted to draw that distinction and just to, to give uh, the, the guest here tonight some perspective as to AP is, it of course, is not for everybody, um, but it is an opportunity to better yourself and better prepare yourself and better position you um, when you get into college. And, and it's looked at in a positive way, much like honors and graduating with distinction. Let's say you're going off to medical school or law school, graduating with distinction is absolutely paramount. You want to set yourself apart. Um, 
So at this point, uh, I don't see any more questions. Uh, what I do want to do is, is certainly thank all of our guests today who submitted their questions in advance. Um, they made our, our life a lot easier. Um, we love talking, all of us. And I can tell you as an admissions professional, we will talk your head off. Um, but I'm not here to blue suit you tonight. But I, I do want to emphasize the importance of AP. And I, I do want to give thanks to all of those who submitted those questions. Um, being patient, again, you could have been anywhere tonight and you you chose to be with us. And so on behalf of the entire Wayne State community, thank you. Um, additionally, I want to make this point that if you like, um, we also have an opportunity where you feel free to record, you know, share this recording with your family and friends. And if you have questions for us, additional questions after tonight, I know we talked about a lot, um, submit those to APDay at wayne.edu. Again, I'll repeat that. It's apday.wayne, I mean, apday at wayne.edu, and it's all lowercase. So I want to thank the panel. Really, all of you did an outstanding job tonight. Um, I learned a lot, too. Um, you think in 25 years you know quite a bit on the road, but you don't. And so we're all learning here, and we're all sharing this information, and I hope this has been beneficial to our guests tonight. Um, Laura, we appreciate you, Rachel, Alex, and Louie. And, and Dawn left a little early. We want to thank her, too, mm -hmm. because she's doing some magnificent things out there in the community with the uh, yeah. local school districts as well as the state level. And we are proud of her and what she's doing. We're proud of what Wayne State's doing. And, folks, we're very generous when it comes to credits. I know a lot of schools will make you take those classes over or won't give you credit. And I know Wayne State's very generous in that. And so I, you know, I'm, I'm happy to say that we represent a, a first class institution in that regard. Again, thank you all for joining us tonight. We hope this has been beneficial. Again, feel free to reach out to us and let us know what you think or if, if you have some additional questions for us. Everyone have a good evening and thanks for joining us tonight.